So there's a couple different ways to create a rig for your character. I've been using Auto Rig Pro, but for the sake of staying free, we're actually going to use free software. We're going to use Rigify, which is built right into Blender. And you can access it by just making sure you have it installed under the add-ons menu. So just like we installed the Node Wrangler, you go into edit, preferences, um, you're going to want to install Rigify, R-I-G-I-F-Y, just make sure it's selected. And it's, it's super straightforward. So a couple things first, this guy, your mesh, make sure your origin is at the center. So control A, apply the location. Cool. I don't think that matters as much for the mesh as it does for the uh, armature, but um, nonetheless, it doesn't hurt to keep it there. So we can go ahead and shift A, and now that you've installed Rigify, you get more options under the armature section. And you might instinctively click human, but I actually like to go, for such a simple character, I like to add a basic human meta rig. And we have our human meta rig, and automatically, it sort of shows you the differences, right? It's the same height, except look how low our torso is and look where the head should be. So if you're feeling so inclined to, this is a good time to start tab and edit mode and just maybe with proportional editor turned on, um, just sort of start going in through here and giving things a push or pull up or down um, just, in, just in the slightest to like, um, keep things a little more aligned to like, hey, this is how tall a human should be, right? Move this up just a little bit. And I don't even want to affect the the shape of the head we just created, but I, I think that looks a little goofy, to be honest. You don't have to stick perfectly to like, this is what a human should be. Like this is, again, it's a stylized character, so you pick and choose. The one things that are important are, hey, where are these these little circles lining up because they should line up with the knees and does this line up with the elbows and we're going to go through and we're going to edit all that so you add it in your human what we can do now is i like to just go right into edit mode turn on x symmetry up here so anything you do to one side of the armature it reflects on the other side it's just a quick and easy way to get this in place i like to delete this piece because it, i don't need it really that piece operates the breast of a character. So perfect, we deleted that. Let's just start putting things into place. So grab these guys here. And I'll work with the arms first. And I just sort of put them down where they where I feel like they should be. You can sort of zoom in and pull this guy right to the tip of the fingers. This one can go to the to the wrist. And this one goes right on your elbow, right on that little middle crease of the three. You created that little three box with the bevel before. You want to put it right in the middle, just so it, it bends perfectly around that on each side. And if you look from the top view, you can also get another view of where's this lining up. So I'll put that one back there. Put the hand more in the center of the hand. Maybe even move this a little closer. Because our head is so big, um, which again, this is not natural, like to anatomy speaking, but it thinks your head should be starting up here. I honestly just grab all these guys including this one, and I just like bring them down a little bit, uncheck that one, bring this one, oops, you want to have, you want to make sure these are touching there still, and just bring them, bring them down, just keep working their way down. And it's important that this piece here is at the, the base of the head, this big one, I like to bring the whole head bone the whole way up. This is actually the head bone, so this is what's going to move everything, so it's important to keep that in the right place. And the neck too is important. You can just keep it right there. So I know the spine's not perfectly aligned, but I I honestly do not care. It works just the same for me every time. Okay, so I'll go back in the front view, and now it's time to work on the legs. So I'll grab the top of this one and I'll it actually is helpful if you grab them all in, in like one piece and move them. Just so we're not getting any rotational issues. So move like that. Just to put it right below the belt, I like to keep them right below the belt where they're going to move. Um, grab this guy, and again, you're looking for those three lines that you made in the, um, actually it's right here. These are the three lines that we made with the, with the knee. So it's going to go right on that middle line, just like we did before. That's where our kneecap has to go, so we'll move that up. 
And then in the front view, we'll grab this whole foot section. And I just like to put it right at the bottom, the sideways bone right there at the bottom. And go into the side view and make sure we pull back a little bit. And just, just work it around. You want to keep a slight bend in the knee just for the IK system, for the inverse kinematic system it's going to generate. If there's not a slight bend in the knee, it's going to get confused and be like, oh, which, which way does the knee bend, this way or that way? So it's sort of like you're like cheating it a little bit one way just to, just to tell the computer, hey, man, I know which way to bend. So like that's like clearly like it's going to be like, got you. I know where to bend now. So our armature is in the right place. Now, you might be instinctively driven to just go ahead and parent this to the mesh with the good old select the old mesh grab the bones, control P, automatic weights, but that's caveman style, and we're not gonna do that. We have a couple more steps first, and it's not hard. So, select your rig here, and this is your meta rig. Meta rig is telling you, hey, this is like, generally, the meta rig refers to the rig. Think of it like that, think of like a something that's meta. It's like referring to something else. Like, this meta rig refers to the real rig that we're about to create. So this is basically like we're just drawing guidelines with this rig here. So we've put it in place and to, to specify where it's going, we have to do control A, apply the scale and apply the location, which just like we did with the mesh, it basically says, okay, everything that's here, it's really here. So now that that's ready, this rig is ready to be generated and that's right over here in this tab. So over here, click on this little walking man here. And then when you, when you, Add the Rigify, you're going to get these um, three new little drop downs. And right under this Rigify buttons, it's just Generate Rig. And it's quick and easy, just click in that. And there, we've built our rig. This is our character rig. And again, the meta rig refers to the character rig. So we don't need the meta rig anymore. You can hide that, get it out of the way. Heck, you can move it out of the collection if you want to. And now we have our rig. And um, I don't know that we named this character, but now's, now's a good time to actually name our character. So I'm gonna just give this character a name here. We're gonna call this character Simon. Bam. There's no reason why, right? There's no reason why this character's named Simon. I just wanted it to be Simon. This sphere, this is referring to our eyes. So I will just select this. So this is just, again, we're now going through, we're applying some of the things that we've created. So I will drop this mirror down, hit apply. So I'll grab these ears. I'll apply the mirror modifier that way. Cool. All right, and we can rename these ears. And we can rename these spheres eyes. So we have Simon, eyes, and ears. And that's the only portions of our characters that we actually actually have. So we have our actual rig here. Um, this is a good time to name this rig. So this is Simon rig. Now, the part we've been waiting for, you can just select your character, select the rig, so that way the rig is the active object, control P. Now we can hit it with the old automatic weights. And it was quick and simple. And if you do control tab on your keyboard with the rig selected, you're in a pose mode and you can move it around and your character is rigged how they should be automatically with IK. So you're gonna have all these these constraints built up and now you're gonna realize the eyes and the ears aren't part of it. Um, but the quick and easy way to just get around that is just right away, grab your ears, grab your eyes, then grab the rig, control tab, go into pose mode, select this top head here. So now you have both the eyes, the ears selected, and then the active object is the rig and inside the rig you've selected the head specifically, now you can do control P and apply what you have to that bone. So now if we move this top bone around, it will move with it. So let's look in here in material view. If we move this thing around, we have the head applied and the arm applied, this guy applied. So everything is in place. Awesome. Okay, now I will just select everything, Alt-R, Alt-G, which just says clear the rotation, clear the position, and we are good. Okay, so I'll go into object mode again. So a couple more things. I will, um, if you didn't watch my tutorial on 
applying shape keys as the as facial expressions um, click here to watch it because it's actually um, the quickest easiest way if you want to just have some quick expressions but I'm just gonna run through that really quick here and I'm not gonna use bones this time so I'm just gonna hit add add a basis key so basically this is saying hey everything here um, this is the base mesh so we're gonna deform off of this I'm gonna add another one this is gonna be our first deformation and what's that gonna be well I'm gonna call this mouth closed and I'm just gonna tab into edit mode with mouth closed selected and I'm just gonna throw everything into a nice little closed position okay so I did that now if I drag the slider up the mouth closes it opens let's add another one this will be our blink And likewise, what we did before, we can just, I'm going to grab these two here, and I'm just going to pull them down and sort of rotate them into position. Same thing with this side here. That's our blink. Now let's just watch it through to make sure nothing clips. Perfect. Okay, so our blink is there. Um, a newer method of, of doing this than adding bones is just adding custom properties and it's super quick and easy. So this is, this is good to do this directly on the character. So I will select our character mesh and then under the object tab here we have this title called custom properties which you're probably like what is this? What, like, what do you mean what's a custom property? Well this is basically all these over here are properties that um, are added by default by Blender basically things on this side are properties and most of them are added in by blender by default but you can add your own in and they can they can control drivers which is the coolest thing we can do so I will add a custom property and I will edit it and I will call this property mouth closed and then the property value I will say is one the default value can be zero and min zero max one um, if you use soft limits this allows you to go outside of one but really we don't want this selected because it's either zero or one the mouth is either not closed or it's closed there's no two there's no negative one it's zero or one and you also want to select this is over is library overridable this is going to allow you to use this when your character is outside of this blender scene so for example when we import our character in or when we, when we link our character to the scene this allows you to use this property in the library so I will just hit OK and now it, you'll see it right under the properties mouth close 0 or 1 and what's quick and easy is you can find you can navigate the whole way down here and and grab this guy and you know change the value like this which is kind of a pain if you're animating so the easier method would be having this custom property where you have mouth closed and if you change this value it will affect that and we're going to do that with the driver and you might be rolling your eyes and go, oh drivers watch how easy this is this sometimes drivers are as simple as this I'm going to right click on this I'm going to say copy as new driver I'm going to go over to my mouth closed in the value I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit paste driver literally now I can just drag this left and right now this thing directly affects the mouth being closed. Now we can do the exact same thing with the blink, right? I'm going to add a new one. I'm going to edit this property. This is going to be blink. The property value is 1. Default value, I'll make this 0. And we again, we don't want soft limits. We don't want this going below 0 or above 1 or above 1. This is going to be overridable. And then if I you can also add a little tool tip here. So this is like if you hover over it, it'll tell you what it does. We'll just say um, controls, and you don't have to do this, but say you're making this rig for someone else, and there's not, and the property's not as straightforward as blink. It can be, it can be pretty obscure. You can have as many of these as you want, right? You can just give it a little more detail. This controls the blink. Okay, and now look, we have another one here, which I will right click, copy as a new driver, with this, with our character here. Go back into the vertex groups, 
or this object data's property, and go down to shape keys and find blink, click on that, right click on the value and paste that driver in there. And now our blink is being controlled by this one. So our character now is fully rigged up and with a little bit of cleanup here, so we can add a new collection. So let's go ahead and save this character. So control S, save. I will add a new collection. We will call this Simon. That's all we need to know. And this character is Simon. What should be in Simon? Well, I like to just make sure everything that's in Simon is there. So I like to turn Simon off first, and then I just start moving things into the ob into the collection until there's nothing left that we need. So I will move this into Simon. And see why this is helpful? Because you might forget something, and you might forget to add something into the collection. This way, as long as you start moving things, grab the body, move to Simon. Oh look, we forgot about the eyes. Those also need to be in Simon. Move, Simon, move the ears to Simon. Now I can just turn Simon back on. And everything in Simon is what we'll need for controlling Simon. So, perfect. We've created our character. Good work, you got this far. We've completely created a character. Now, if I save this, let's go into a scene. Okay, so we've loaded up a little scene here, and it's time to bring in our character. So because you've created this whole character file, um, it's as easy as just referencing that file. So you'll go to File, Link. You'll find the directory where you've created your character, and then you will double click on it and then find the collection you just select that character's name because there's gonna be a bunch of other stuff like widgets and collection that you don't necessarily need and you can link that character in and there's our character right over here and our characters fully ready to go now you can see there's not much you can do with it because it's just like you can't go into edit mode, there's nothing, it's just linked, right? So, um, what we can do then is, with our character, we're like, okay, I'm ready to actually use it. So we're gonna override this character. So, click object, go to relations, and make a library override. Now, do you remember that slider that we selected um, with the custom properties that says make library override? That basically allows you to use those things in this situation, so if I select this character now, under properties, he's still going to have these custom properties built in that we can control. Now we have our character's armature here that you can just go into pose mode and just drag it around and animate your character now that it's all rigged up and ready to go. So yeah, I'm not going to go over teaching how to animate in this tutorial because that's out of the scope of the tutorial. This tutorial is how to make a character for animation. And here we've uh, we've created our full character. Maybe this looks a little bit more like T-Rex style thing here, but uh, you get the point, right? Our characters, our characters rigged and ready to go. We can control all these different aspects. A little blink action. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey, see. Look, if you don't just want to play with the character like an action figure once you're done, then restart because you're not having enough fun. So yeah, thanks for watching. Drop a comment. Let me know how this worked out for you. And uh, also, if you are following along with me, share your characters over with me on Instagram. Here's my at. Just feel free to DM me your characters. I love, I love seeing the work you guys create, and it's really cool. Um, Feel free to drop your questions down in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll try to get back to you. So again, thanks for watching and uh, hope this helps you out.